Hi everyone, welcome to the BizDev Podcast, the podcast about developing your business. I am David Baxter, and I am joined by Gary, insert funny joke here, Voight. Eh? Am I doing the joke, or are you doing the joke? Uh, I failed the joke. It, that was, that was, that was, oh, that was, that was my the daughter. Joke. She's got a bunch of good jokes. Does she have we'll come back good to jokes? That. Okay, well, we'll come back to that someday, which she can come on and she can do, she can roast me. That'll be great. Um, that won't be weird at all. Anyway, how are you? I'm pretty good. <laughs> we just we just came off a little bit of a holiday weekend, right? And we're going into more of the holidays. So we're going into the holiday. It's the holiday season. Um, I now I have that Christmas song stuck in my head. Um, I do you like Christmas music? I like some Christmas music. I don't like the over commercialized Christmas music. Like. My go-to favorites is Nat King Cole, old Christmas songs like that. When is it okay to play Christmas music? Um, I would say December 24th at 3 p.m. until mm-hmm. December 25th, 3 p.m. That's about it. Great. 24-hour window? Okay. So yeah. you are a... You're stricter than even the, the Thanksgiving. Are you an, a pre-Thanksgiving Christmas guy or a post-Thanksgiving Christmas guy? post but I mean, we used to be, I would say when my wife and I were just dating, we moved in to get together or whatever, and we would decorate, the, put up the Christmas tree usually like two to three weeks after Thanksgiving. So it was a little closer to Christmas. But since then, it's been slowly coming more and more close to Thanksgiving. So over the last couple of years, I've had to like <laughs> try to state my case for no tree before the turkey. I'm like, we can't do it the week before. We can't do it. And I've been, up to this year, I've been winning that battle, but I don't think I'm going to win next year because now my two daughters love decorating the Christmas tree and stuff, so they get into it. Nice. As soon as they get that first week off of school, they want to do it. So I am a post-Thanksgiving guy myself. I don't like going to retail stores and hearing Christmas in, in October. My wife worked at Container Store years and years ago. Um, and they have this crazy tradition where the, I'm going to mess this up, but I think it's the weekend. Uh, now it might've changed. This was like 20 years ago, but the weekend of Thanksgiving, you would come in Friday and you would pull an all nighter to just completely decorate. Cause I mean, container stores all, you know, they kill it on Christmas. And so they redecorate the whole store within overnight and then boom, they turn on the lights and it's, it is crazy intense. And uh, she did that for a few years. Anyway. Um, While we're on the topic, and don't say Die Hard, but do you have a favorite Christmas movie? Die Hard. No. I'm just <laughs> um, no. Um, do I have a favorite Christmas movie? Like one I watch every year? No. No. I don't oh, like okay. watching movies over and over again. I do like Elf. I think that is a very Elf sweet great. movie. Yeah. Um, Except for the reverse truck. Do you know? Here's my hot take. Do you know what I, my least favorite Christmas movie is? I'm going to say your least favorite Christmas movie is... I'm going to say it's Miracle on 34th Street. No. It's White Christmas. And you know why? Because it's no, not a Christmas no movie. Okay. That movie is the biggest bait and switch ever. So we watched it, right? We wanted to... We, this was year, two, three years ago. I, we watched it with the whole I've family. I have ever seen it. Is it a well, yeah, it was a classic, movie? right? Huh? No, what? No, come on, Bing Crosby. We're going way back. Okay, 50s. okay, okay. Forties, fifties. I can't remember. I think it's fifties. It might have been during the Korean War. It doesn't matter. It's old. It's a classic. It's where the song "White Christmas" come from. Okay. They made that a whole movie. movie that? No, they didn't. That's the thing. The whole movie <laughs> is really... about these guys travel and these kind of shysters, and they're trying to to. Get the lady right. It's a classic song and dance. It's a wonderful little movie. Then at the end of it, the last two minutes, they do a Christmas number, and suddenly it's a Christmas movie. It is so ridiculous. It's not a. It's less of a Christmas movie than Die Hard. There's my hot take. So I every year okay. they're like top Christmas movies. Bing Crosby. No, get out. Get out. Anyway, all right. This is not what you're here to hear. Talk about. We are here to talk about tech. And business stuff, and it's Christmas time, so we're we're kind of all over the map. 
um, which is kind of part of the subject today, actually. Um, you want to talk again about AI art. I think you're just using this so you get more screen time. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> maybe no, actually, yeah. I was just, it's just things with AI art and generated art, they, it's just changing so quickly and so rapidly that there's always a new story that piques my interest. So instead of talking about the downfall of other social media stuff, I thought we could talk about something cool. But we can move on. Tell me, tell me what is cool about AI art that's new that we haven't talked about. Well, you know, the machine learning gets better and better the more prompts you give it, and that just sure. accumulates over time, and it just exponentially gets better and better and faster and faster. So now there's um, use cases that they're finding a little bit more commercial and realistic that aren't infringing on anybody's you know art or taking anybody's jobs or anything like that. This is stuff that they combine. Disney combined the technology from the deep fake technology and mm -hmm. the AI generated art, like from OpenAI mm -hmm. and from the other one, and kind of combined them in a way where they can take a real actor's face on screen and have them move around and give lines, and then that deep fake will take those, you know, frames and kind of make their own version, you know what I mean, their own 3D simulated character. And then they'll use the OpenAI art engine to put the features of that person back on. So it's like they can de-age and increase age of actors by like 20 years without you even noticing. Like it looks so real. What, you know what I will say? The Have you seen the AI things where you can take a static picture and make it move and make it talk? There's a few apps that do that now. No. No, I remember there used to be like Snapchat filters where if you took a couple pictures, then it would turn it into a cool like stop animation kind of like fake 3D screen. This is a is thing. I can't think of the name of the app, and I'm sorry, I should be able to know this. But you, you upload a picture, and then you can make it, you can have it sing. Like they'll put it like a, a Christmas tune, let's say Jingle Bells, and suddenly this picture is now singing. It's not perfect, right? It's still two-dimensional. But it's really wild. Like you, the, the the classic ones, they'll take a, the old portrait of George Washington and make him sing like okay. Jingle Bell Rock. Very cute. Um, I tried it once and it was super creepy. Like what I think the un unspoken is is how much after work they're doing. Like they they'll generate the gizmo right, and then they'll have a real artist go and make it look great behind. You know what I'm saying? Afterwards. And it's like, it seems a bit disingenuous because I can't take any of these tools and make them like Prism. Uh, that's one of the apps of the company you mentioned, the Linsa AI, that's yeah. a new app. Their other app is called Pris Prisma. And I can't make that ever do good. They have a um, magic avatars section in that app now where you take a bunch of photos of yourself and then you pick like a certain style of either cinematic or comic book. Or what is behind or you? Vroom, vroom. Yeah, I'm in an alternate uh, location today, and that was a motorcycle going down the street. <laughs> Is it at the truck park? <laughs> They're doing monster <laughs> trucks outside? <laughs> no, that was like a Harley or something. They've but, been blowing weed, weeds, leaves behind. I was afraid it was going to be. It's been constant right behind me all day. Just, oh, my gosh. I hate that. They stopped so right before. Well, they started like, they stopped like 45 minutes ago. Yeah, so it was, it, we, we lucked out. So what I was going to say was the magic avatars. Like, um, there's not an artist behind the scene, but you give it prompts, and then you can give it more detailed prompts, and then you can kind of further filter through by adding more text cues. But at the same time, it's generating like 20, then 40, then 60, and then it's filtering them down, and then you you constantly keep picking which ones are getting better and better and better. So it's not really an artist upgrading it, but the machine learning is actually just making little altered changes, little iterations every single time based on new prompts until you find something you like. So out of like the 20 that they give you at the end, there might be one good one, or you might just start over. But they give you all of those so quickly that it doesn't seem like it's a hassle to keep picking through. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, I like this one and this one, and then it just keeps going, the cycle goes. That, I mean, I, I love the creativity, so I'm, I, I'm excited. I haven't seen this one. The ones I've seen before, they were really Yesterday, bad. Um, from a, a designer that I follow, and I'm going to pull a David here and not remember exactly who it's from, 
But oh, dude. the tweet was uh, AI art becomes more creative when it's created through the eyes and the mind of someone created. In other words, when artists get into the AI art and they start giving prompts and refining and, and you know working it that way, the results are going to be way better than anyone who doesn't have that mind. That's been true forever. I mean, think of um, so Squarespace. It, basically, it's just saying, you know, don't don't be too worried about AI art taking away the creativity of humanity. It still takes a creative mind to push it further. Well, I mean, the, people used to tell me that my job was over because Squarespace and Wix yeah. and the average person can just put together a website. Every time Photoshop made selecting an object or masking out an object easier, everybody's like, oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's like, I just not don't. What I do. You can take what, even if it is what I, even if you are a WordPress developer, right? Yeah. Compare, compare what Joe Blow created from Squarespace, take the same tools and give it to a real designer slash developer. It's night and day, dude. It's just, Absolutely. <laughs> they're using the same tool set. But it's it's an eye. It's a creativity. It's a yeah. It's like a master carpenter versus a guy that goes to Home Depot every month and grabs a couple yeah. Of I mean, they're both buying wood, right? Yeah. I mean, come on. Um, so I think there's a good transition into what we were planning on talking about, which is, um, you know, it's kind of the end of the year, and what do you do? And for us, what it, what it made me the end of the year for us is our slow period. Um, generally, mid November to February things, the concept of new clients slows down, right? Budgets are spent um, or they're busy for the holidays. You know, if you work for larger companies, a lot of times a big companies slow down because all the vacations start happening and you can't get really much done. And so we were thinking, what do you do when you're the business owner and it's slow time? One, you freak out. No, don't freak out. Uh, I, I, I will say years ago, Typically I that's would. Typically what happens though. That's, that's part of it, right? Because you're a new company, say you're two years old, you got through the first year slog and you, you feel like you're going to make it right. You've, you've done it. You're going to get up a little bit of steam during like the, the middle of the year. And you feel like, oh man, I figure in this business ownership thing out. And then you hit your slow period, your first one, maybe your second one. And it's super scary, right? Cause you were just making it maybe a little extra profit, maybe a little bit here. You were paying yourself and it wasn't, killing you and you were getting excited and then it's like a train just stops and it doesn't have to be christmas time for us it's christmas time but um for some people you know it's the summer other people it's you know, it just depends on your industry every industry is different ours is the, is the crossing of the year um, usually we'll pick up in february and march um, where people start calling again but years ago i'll tell you what i've done that what besides freaking out um one year it, it, this is weird because we were, it was just me. No, I think I might have had one contractor. I mean, this was several years ago. And I spent six weeks creating processes that I had had in my head and I put them down on paper. What does a big pixel project look like? How do we run it? How do we, you know, do what we do better than other people, right? I was writing it all down. This is what I'd been saying forever. But creating those processes, and I am not a process guy. I'm not super detail-oriented. That's just not my thing. But that doesn't matter. It's still your vision, right? I'm, I'm talking to the business owner here. It's your vision. Even if it's poorly written down, it's it's now permanent. Does that make sense? That's It's good yeah. to get that out. And ideally, if you're a larger startup, if you've got some employees, you can get your employees to buy into it. But I do think it's worth doing all by yourself. Throw it out on paper, even if it's poorly done, a first draft, and then you have to talk them through it, but it's yours. It's uniquely yours because you're the visionary, right? You're the guy, gal who is steering this ship. So something in you is unique. Now, what the team does really well is then they flesh that out and make that doable, workable, but it's still going to have that je ne sais quoi, as it were, that you bring to the table as the owner. I gla you're glazing over, so I feel like I've lost you or made you bored. No, you just got to frou-frou with the je ne sais quoi. So. I, I said French stuff. Look at me. I said French yeah. stuff. So in a way, what you're saying is if you're a small business owner, and this is like one of the first relatively newer to you 
periods of slowdown, it's a good time to do a little bit of like self-reflection and self-improvement as a business and kind of get all those ideas out of your head that you were too busy to do throughout the year and start crafting them into building processes or changing things to help the direction for the upcoming year. Yeah, because it's going to get busy again. God willing, it, your, your company is not dead, right? It's slow, but not dead. Um, hopefully, you've been planning. If the, the hardest thing for me, honestly, when I was brand new, I didn't know there was a slow period. Like it, it, You know what I'm saying? I, I had no idea that it was cyclical. Every business is cyclical. But I was like, you know, people need web apps all year. Somewhat that's true. But the phone stops ringing when holidays are here or whatever. A lot of times it's during the summer, right? You're everyone's on vacation again. And but for me, that was scary. That's when it first hit. hit what, what is this? What, am I going out of business now? Why is it so slow all of a sudden? Am, is this the beginning of the end? Right? All of these go into your head when you're year two, three years old, and then you start realizing year two, three, four, that it is you can prepare for this. And when you start preparing for this, now it's not so scary. Now it's kind of a breather, right? You've been pushing hard all year long. It, what I try to do is I try to find clients and work that is going to get us over the, the slope here, the holiday time. Meaning let's, let's sign up a client in October, September, October. That's four, five, six months right? That's magic, right? That's going to cast us over. It's going to be finished in February. I'll be ready to hit something new. That's ideally what I try to do. Of course, it doesn't always work that way, but that's ideally what I try to do. And cause I know it's coming. Yeah. So, and then I'm not freaking out, right? Then it's December like it is right now. And it's okay. Cause now we're slower. We can catch our breath a little bit. People do start taking vacations. That's okay. People, we start doing training more for our people. Um, all of that stuff is possible now. You can kind of, we just did our strategic planning, which I think we talked about a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and that was, that was very enlightening. One, it was, you know, new people coming in now. Um, see what joined us for the first time this year. Um, and he brought in new, new life. And that now we can think about it. Now I have time to ruminate and think about it um, and think all your ideas are useless and, uh, you know, come up with better ones. I'm just kidding. Even though you use all my ideas and just take credit for them yourself, that's okay. Well, sure. I mean, come on. <laughs> that the mark of a good leader is uh, stealing everyone else's ideas. Come on. Uh, it's not like Mark Zuckerberg's writing all this code. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> when you were saying that uh, different industries is they have different slow periods, mm. I do remember that when I was um, freelancing in the area in which I live and some of the clients that I had towards the end of the year. There's like a lot of award type ceremonies for nonprofits and charities and, and businesses that are attached to those. So usually starting in September is when I'll, I'll get a lot of asks for stuff that's due, you know, end of November, beginning of December, right before the holidays, right when people are starting to feel generous and charitable. It's when they have their, you know, awards or whatever. And then mm -hmm. also, usually they'll have like, there's some companies that they'll do like, for instance, if there was like a four under 40 or you know three under 30 type thing which is just a business way of saying here's some you know younger professionals that are doing a great job that were nominated by the people that they work with and they're under the age of you know whatever and it's usually like networking groups and chambers that do that so they would have those build up throughout the holidays for like nominations and stuff and then they would present those awards in the very beginning of the next year you know what i mean so during this what's slow period for custom software development that was actually a really busy season for some of the for myself and some of the other designers in my area just based on that kind of work alone but what i will say on that end is while we have all that stuff to create and to put, put out and get approved getting feedback from anybody or getting approval from anybody is insanely hard because no one's around <laughs> so yeah everybody's getting on getting approvals is a nightmare you know, we actually cl started closing Big Pixel. Like the whole company closes the last week of the year. And we started doing that because it was impossible to actually be very productive. If you need client feedback. No matter what you did, it would just be at a standstill anyway. 
Yeah, you're not going to be doing anything. I mean, and people who are working, right? I mean, I, I was corporate life for a long time. Working on the holiday, that week between Christmas and New Year's, come on. You're coming in. You're checking emails. You're not doing anything real. Let's be honest here. I mean, some people, of course, do. But uh, corporate work slows to a crawl. Yeah. If you're in a service industry or something, it's different. But yeah. Sure. But if you're, at, if you're a desk jockey at a corporation, you're not doing anything. You're not doing anything. Um, and your clients aren't doing anything, and that's fine. So we just took it off, and we will let our clients know. Usually by November, we're reminding them that, again, even our clients who we've had for four or five years still forget. So, <laughs> that is a question. You know, it's one of those things that's totally out of left field. When do you get client gifts for Christmas? We've never done that. We have never bought clients gifts for Christmas, but I know it's a thing. It's a whole industry, right? Yeah. Yeah. I am curious about that. And I don't really have any answers, but you know, we have big clients that are incredibly important to us and I have never bought them a Christmas gift. Now, to be fair, the reason for that is because they're all over the world. Not only but, that, it's not like we're dealing with one person. And then it's not like you want to get one person a gift because then you don't want anybody else that they work with to be offended that they didn't get some, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So it's a very, that's a tricky situation. I will say when I was, previous job when I was at the media company, um, advertising clients basically would have like a salesperson to certain accounts and then they would typically give gifts or something similar to like nothing really expensive, maybe just like a little basket with like whatever sneaky snacks and like a promotional discount sneaky for snacks. a campaign yes. you know what I'm saying sausages I, and I cheese don't, I, I just have to make fun of you because you said the word sneaky snack I didn't say je ne sais quoi it's <laughs> but, not like I tried to say charcuterie board or whatever that word is charcuterie Char oh my Char god charcuterie dude charcuterie my wife will come through the screen and beat you she loves it what my point was they would just give them to the person in charge of the account that they service. So it wasn't like for business and they did have one specific contact. So that was a little bit more like personal between, you know, client and sales rep. But yeah, for us, it would be weird because how do you send a gift to a company that's got multiple locations and you, you have no idea who to send it to. <laughs> yeah. How do you even get it to them? Uh, but yeah, I, I've, I'm, I'm, I would love to hear. That's why we on post them. a little, you know, social media. Merry Christmas. Oh, sure, and, and everyone's is super meaningful for everyone. Yes, that's, that's <laughs> it's very touching for all our clients. Everybody looks and goes. Oh, they thought of me. They said for all our clients. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. It's so funny when you think about these things. It's like there's so many questions that come to mind. Like, what do you spend on? I would love to ask other business owners, we should ask on the podcast, what do you do for Christmas gifts? Is this going back on the podcast? Are we editing this? Yeah, I, whatever. It, you, hey, the editor and Christy can just pick and choose from the chocolate box of life that we are building here for this podcast. The charcuterie so, board of topics. It's a charcuterie <laughs> board of the podcast. With some je ne sais quoi. I would like, you're just jealous. I would like to know what other people do for Christmas gifts, what other people do for Christmas bonuses. I should ask my C12 guys this. What do people do for Christmas parties? What do people do? Because um, this is what people want to know, right? I own a small business. What are other people doing? Because I don't know. And, and business owners don't know a lot of other business owners. That's just because there's not a lot of us. That is true. And that is weird. It seems like the standard comes from the business owner or the leader's past experiences. It's not exactly like everybody's getting together in some networking group and being like, you know what, this is what we do. Oh, that makes sense. Let's do that too. But even like my C12 group, I've never heard an answer to that question. I've never heard an ask. Like if you have a hundred employees, you can't go super crazy, right? But how do That's you do- That's when they do get a $25 gift certificate to like a grocery store for Christmas. Is that meaningful? Like I think the key is no matter how many people you have, it has to be meaningful. And that's tricky. Like I try to give nice Christmas presents for all of our team because we have a small team and I want to say thank you. That's a big deal to me. I enjoy it every year. Um, and let me just say thank you now for enrolling me in the Jelly of the Month Club. You are so welcome, dude. 
Next year, it's going to be uh, jelly bellies. You get one jelly belly every month to try. <laughs> I hope they start with buttered popcorn. Oh, really? Oh, that's get out. so gross. I'm joking. That's the grossest one. Okay, all right. I was so about to fire you. were saying you wanted to get meaningful gifts for employees. Well, something. just saying, what do other people do? Because I, I, we have 11 people. So we can do meaningful gifts and, and put a decent dollar tag on there. So I, I, I have more of a budget, right? Because I have 11 people. If you have 100 people or 200 people or 1,000 people, what is meaningful? Like, you, what kind of budget is I, These are just questions I've always wanted to ask. And I have no one to ask them. I, I'm going to ask my C12 guys. I'm going to report back and say, this is what Yeah, let's find out on the next one. Um, it'll be January, but whatever. Um, so we'll do a post holiday, post holiday. Post holiday. What'd you get for Christmas? Fat and happy. No, just joking. Um, what was your favorite gift? Is there anything else that you would think is a good way to end the year in a productive manner besides freaking out that you're going to go out of business? I think it's a good time of the year for small businesses and startups to kind of look at their brand voice and the way they present themselves whether it's on either their website or just social media or whatever kind of marketing that they do and you have time at the end of the year if you're in a slow period to take like a broader look at everything and just see you know is this us is this how we feel about ourselves is this the voice we're putting out what can we change or tweak to maybe you know make it feel a little bit more authentic going forward. And I'm not talking about start a whole new campaign or I'm not talking about rebranding or anything like that, but it's a good time to just sit back and go, okay, we know that social media marketing is pretty much how most companies do a majority of their marketing these days because it's super quick and it's fairly cheap and it touches a lot of eyeballs. So with that, there's a ton of social media marketing that's going out that not everybody's going to see and especially not if you're a small business and you're just putting out whatever you can as much as you can it can start to get a little bit um, watered down or it can miss the mark for what you're actually trying to communicate sometimes so you can kind of pull that back in and be a little bit more concise with the messaging you could do what might seem silly in these days since we live in a digital world but print out or take screenshots of a bunch of the different ones that you do like and don't like when it comes to the messaging and the imagery and put them up against each other and say okay maybe we need to lead in this direction more less of this direction we can scrap that idea and push that forward this is how we actually talk (laughs) and it's very reflective of the kind of mood and tone that we're in right now with the end of the year yeah that's right we're we're chilling we're Working hard, finishing up the year, and uh, um, it's kind of nice. I mean, I love our guests, but it's kind of nice to not have one, I got to say. We just, we just talk. Probably shouldn't put that in the podcast, but there you have it. Um, <laughs> might need to edit that. <laughs> and there's the Harley again. There's, dude, where are you? Your monster truck rally is really, really on point today. All right, everybody. I, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, we will be back uh, uh, next week. If you didn't enjoy it and you really want to let us know, you can email us, hello at thebigpixel.net. You can leave messages on our social media channels. You can do what people do on leave YouTube. Complaints. Leave rude comments and complaints. Yeah, reach out to us. Let us know how much how much you, you enjoy, enjoy the Harley trucks. in the background. <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny? A and lot how of horrible the, we I are have... without a guest. <laughs> We need guests. No. You know, we're actually booked to guests for like half of next year. Yeah. No, so. it's, it's actually pretty exciting. For people who do listen, we've got some, some really cool uh, guests coming up. Some exciting stories to tell. Some interesting businesses to dissect. Wow. That's morbid. Or okay. just more fun ways to watch David go. So what's interesting is... Oh. And then ask the question. <laughs> oh, rude. My son has a compilation of all my ums and ahs. So, I mean, it's all it's all relative. Everybody hit, hates on me. That's fine. We'll do a big Pixel SoundCloud channel, and we'll just sell those beats. So, sell those sick, sick beats. Hey, you know what? Christmas bonuses haven't happened yet. That's all I'm saying. Your wife said they went out. <laughs>
Oh crap! I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's right. Uh huh. That's right. And I on that note, pe- peanut butter of the month club to go with my jelly of the month club. <laughs> no, you get one Jelly Belly. That's it. I'm I'm cutting it back. A, Half a Jelly Belly. That was a Christmas vacation joke for anybody. Since I referenced it at the beginning. Who's 84 years old movie. like you are? Yeah. That my was really brother great. Likes like, that movie too. Your younger brother. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for putting up with us. We will see you next time.